Hello, everyone. It is just now 10 o'clock. We're going to give um, everyone a chance to hop on here to what is my first Periscope broadcast in a really, really, really long time. Um, the end of January, my cell phone busted, my screen busted, and it took me a little while to get it fixed. And then when I got it fixed, the camera wasn't working right, so it took me a little bit to get that fixed. And so we are now, technically, we're now up and running where we need to be. So, um, so we're going to be talking today about creating a, uh, a time for you and the importance of that. Um, we're going to go over some practical things to remember when it comes to how to find time for you and why that's important. And we hear people talk all the time about, um, you know, women especially, you know, I just need time for myself. I know I need to take time for myself. But a lot of times that just doesn't happen, even if we know that it's important. So we're going to talk about some really practical things to do to help you with that. And um, so you might want to grab a pen and paper and jot some things down while we're waiting for everyone to kind of jump on. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am at home today uh, doing the scope and my little dog is, is running around. So if you hear uh, barking or chaos, it's it's just my dog, so <laughs> no big deal. Um, but for those of you who are joining and don't know me, or those of you who will watch this later and, and don't know who I am, my name is Christy Browning, um, and I am a speaker, writer, and coach. And you can find more about me at revisionforwomen.com. And if you click um, on the little button down there, it'll take you to my profile here on Periscope, and you can get a link to my website. And the reason why I tell you to check that out is because I don't want to fill up the Periscope with just talking about myself, but I also want you to uh, point you to that site because there is a lot of free um, information for you. Um, not only is there a great ongoing blog and an online magazine um, for you to read for free, but we do a lot of video posts, um, we do a lot of, of e-books and e-journals, all of that's um, free for you. So make sure you get on over there and sign up for our our newsletter so you can stay up to date for that and you'll see on the home page um, our kind of new movement that we started in 2016 uh, live revised and you'll see me use hashtag live revised all the time um, <clears throat> sort of become my signature line uh, and part of that ties into what we're talking about today so the live revised movement is a challenge for women to start living their best um, to step out of mediocrity to step out of fear to step out of whatever it is that's holding you back and to live out your very best life to live the life that's created and designed for you and part of that is um, finding time for yourself and so we're going to dive into that in just a second here but um, revision is my company uh, in of that as a speaker, as a writer, as a coach, everything I do, I gear that to empower, encourage, empower, and inspire women to live a life that is totally created for them, to be the amazing woman that God created them to be, instead of living life according to their uh, disappointments or their mistakes or their failures and all of those negative things that tell us that we can't be anything special or we can't do anything special. Um, so, I'm on a mission to help women revise the way they see themselves and to redefine who they are and whose they are as they go into their future. And hopefully that changes generations um, as that revolution takes on. So make sure you head over there, revision for women. It's all spelled out dot com um, and get signed up for those free goodies because there's some really good stuff there. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about time management. Um, you know, I wrote a book on time management, um, which you can get on my website. I blog about time management a lot. It's sort of those, one of those really passionate topics that gets me fired up because it's so misleading. And there's a lot of information about time management that we hear about today that just really isn't true or accurate. Um, and it kind of leaves us feeling, I think, somewhat disappointed when we talk about time management. And I also think that it sets us up for failure. And I know never want that for any woman. And so um, I've really had to do a lot of work on myself to figure out what does time management look like for me? And uh, what do I need to do to curb some areas of chaos and busyness? And how do I create more time for myself and, and to clear my head and to kind of recapture my sanity uh, and to really invest in me so that I can truly be the best that I can be. And so um, if you've ever heard me speak on time management or even just living your purpose or anything like that, you know, I say a lot that um, the 1990 song Ice Ice Baby that Vanilla Ice recorded in it, he says, anything less 
then the best is a felony. And I totally believe that should be our life mantra because if we live life um, with the concept that if we weren't living our best, that it's a crime, then I think we would be more intent on um, on really living out what's intended for us uh, and going for our best. So when it comes to time management, that's how it is. Same thing. We want the best. We want to um, be in control. We want to be doing what's best for us. And part of that is taking time for ourselves. And I know that we we know that we should take time for ourselves. You know, we know that it's an important uh, part of self-care, but we just never make it a priority. Or when we try to make it a priority, we have all of these other things that, that tend to derail our intent for self-care and time for ourselves. So we're going to talk about that. Um, but first of all, I want to make sure that you know that you know that you know that you know that time management for you and uh, time for you is ultimately the best way to take care of those that you love. There's a saying that says, he who sharpens the axe falls more trees. And what that means basically is, you know, if you had a whole forest of trees that you had to chop down with an axe, then you would, you know, start taking your axe and chopping away at that tree. Eventually, that axe is going to get dull. And you could say to yourself, well, I surely can't stop and take time to sharpen my my blade. I've got all of this work to do, so I'm just going to keep, you know, hacking away. But your efforts would have to be multiplied and would be greater in order to make the same axe do the work because it's not as sharp. But if you took 10 or 15 minutes and you went and sharpened your blade, you could come back and you would probably uh, multiply your efforts uh, quicker because you have a sharper blade. And yes, you know, to take that time out when you have all that work to do uh, may seem crazy at first, but when you come back and start swinging the axe, you're going to fall or you're going to chop down more trees uh, than someone who doesn't have a sharp axe. And so that's the concept you need to get real in your mind, that for you as a mom, for you as a wife, for you as a woman, an employer, maybe you're a business owner, um, a volunteer in your community, you're involved in your church, whatever it is. There has to be time for you in order to be the best at all of those different roles and responsibilities that you have. And if you're a believer and study the Bible, which I do, you will see periodically through the New Testament, especially where Jesus took time to be by himself. And if the Son of God needs a rest, we need a rest too. And we need time for ourselves too. And so you have to come with the mindset that there has to be a better way um, for you to operate. And that's most times making sure there's time for self-care and doing for yourself. In fact, your Periscope point for today is that time set, meaning time set for yourself, is a mindset. So in order to create time for yourself, it has to be a mindset that you know, I have to do this for myself. This is what's going to make me be the best I can be. My husband knows when I start to get really um, cranky and irritable and short with everyone and and almost like panicky, uh, he knows it's been a while since I had time to myself because that's how I recharge. And even if you're an extrovert and you're totally about being around people and being in high energy spaces, there's still a time that you need for yourself alone, a little bit of quiet, a little bit of solitude to recharge yourself. Everybody needs that in some form or fashion. And so uh, he knows when I start to be like that, that Christine, you need time to yourself. And when was the last time you took time for yourself? And so time set is a mindset. So time set for yourself is a mindset. You've got to know that it's important and it's important enough for you to figure out how to put that in to your schedule. So let's talk a little bit about how do you find the time to do that. So <clears throat> there are 101 different time management tools from day planners to apps to um, women who do post-it notes, women who write everything down, women who are list-based people um, to women who just do it off the cuff. Whatever works for you is what works. So there's no right or wrong answer there. Um, There's ways to be more efficient in each of those ways. Um, But, you know, you've got to do what works best for you. But regardless of what app you use or what tool you use to manage your time, it is important that you know uh, what it is that you really need and what your limitations are. So for me, I know that I need to have quiet time to myself at least once a week. I mean, I need that. And um, 
and I know that my limitations are that if I go seven days a week without a break, that I'm going to really be not a nice person. If I have something scheduled every night of the week and I don't have time to just be home and relax and spend time with my husband and be with my family, then I'm not going to be a very nice person. I might be able to keep up appearances for a little while, maybe even for a couple of weeks, but eventually I'm going to burn out, I'm going to be stressed out, and I'm going to feel disconnected with myself. And that's ultimately the biggest um, symptom, I guess, or the biggest uh, side effect from choosing to be so busy is that is that you feel that um, that disconnect. You feel like you're outside of yourself, like you don't really know who you are anymore, if you're kind of lost touch with um, what it is that you need most. And so those things are really important for us as women, especially because we are intuitive and emotional creatures. And I don't mean emotional like hysterical, we cry at everything. I mean, we are just more emotional. We Our emotions play a part in who we are and our, our intuitiveness um, is what makes us women. And so when we don't nurture that, we definitely can feel like we've pulled apart from the very core of who we are. So what is it that you need and what are your limits? So what do you need? Do you need uh, a day away every week? Do you just need an hour at night to unwind? Do you need to get up early in the morning before um, your family gets up and spend quiet time in the morning to kind of get your head on straight and be ready to face the day when the whole gang gets up and the chaos of getting everyone off to school and off to work starts? Um, Maybe you need a break in the middle of the afternoon. Maybe it's um, finding time to take a bubble bath or read your favorite book or eat your favorite chocolate. Whatever it is, um, you have to know what that is. So kind of take some time for yourself and think about that. Uh, What is it that you need? You know, what makes you go... Okay, yeah, huh, I feel good. I feel refreshed. Um, For me, like I said, it's spending time alone. Um, I know at least... One day a week, it doesn't have to be the entire day, a whole 24-hour period. It can be six hours or eight hours. When I have time to myself, um, that's, that's really good for me. That does a lot for me. And that kind of fires me up for what is a really, 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 really busy rest of the week. Um, So what is it that you need and what are your limitations? What's the breaking point for you that you know that if I do one more thing or if I add one more night away from home or if I have to drive to one more practice or one more event, then I'm spent. You know, you got to know what those limitations are ahead of time instead of expending all of your energy and all of your time and all of your mental and emotional well-being and then totally breaking down and falling apart later and your family's looking at you going what just happened (laughs) and you're standing there going I'm so sorry that I just blew up all over you I realize now that I'm really spent you know and I'm really um needing some some downtime and so, um, so you got to know what your limits are and really honor those. Um, you know, someone who's trying to uh, lift weights, they know what their weight limit is. They're not going to start out, you know, lifting 300 pounds if they can only lift 50 pounds. They know what their limitations are. And they would be crazy to walk into the gym and just expect, you know, to do 10 reps of 300 pounds if they can't do that, if they haven't trained for that or prepared for that. And so the same is for us and and what we physically, emotionally, and mentally can handle. We have to know what our limitations are. And that's not to say that that can't evolve or that can't change or in a pinch or whatever that you can't expand that in some way or change that. Um, But for the most part, you have to know what that is and, and adhere to that so that you are being the best you you can be. And we've really gotten into this epidemic, I think, of of comparing ourselves to everyone else. Um, we compare ourselves to other moms that seem to do it all, uh, or we compare ourselves to maybe famous people who we see do it all. You know, that's never an accurate picture um, uh, of what their reality is. Um, I remember my sister, who is an amazing mother, an amazing wife, and she's kind of the stay-at-home uh, domestic diva who just looks like she does it flawlessly. Um, she was the first one in our family to have kids, And my sister-in-law, my brother's wife, she had her first kid. And I remember her honestly being angry, honestly being angry with my sister, who they're best friends, and um, telling her, you know, why didn't you tell me that motherhood and being a mom was so hard? You make it look so easy. I'm so angry, you know, that you painted this picture that it's just a breeze and I'm really struggling. And what she was doing in that moment was really comparing her success as a mom 
to my sister. And they're two different ladies. You can't expect them to be able to measure and compare against each other. And we do that all the time as women, especially. And so don't get caught in that trap. Know what your limitations are and be okay with that. And I guarantee in all the other areas, you're going to be a 10. You're going to score high on the scale because you're going to be really geared up and aimed at what you need to be doing in the best way you need to be doing it. So let's talk about some realistic things um, that happen that sometimes keep us from taking that time for ourselves. This really became a recent passion for me because my schedule sort of changed. Um, I used to be a single gal who had pretty much the run of my schedule. I did what I wanted, kind of when I wanted. I've always sort of held jobs that I was either self-employed or in a commission position where I set my own schedule. So I'm not really used to having to um, be at a certain place at a certain time or do a certain thing at a certain time. And about two years ago, I met and married the most amazing man, and um, we share a life together that involves his two kids. And so life changed really dramatically for me. And so now all of a sudden, my life and my weekends center around family and um, my stepkids. And so all of a sudden, what was a lazy Saturday, Sunday for me incorporated now to teenagers. <laughs> and so that changed. And if you have teenagers, you're like, uh, amen, <laughs> it totally changes. And, um, but it was a good change, but it, it was just a change. Things had to kind of shift. In September, uh, I bought a retail shop, and um, in the first of the year, my husband and I transformed that shop into a video game resale shop, which is doing great. We love, um, but that requires um, for me to be involved in the shop Wednesday through Saturday. So now my time dictated is three days during the week, and then Saturday on the weekend. So uh, on top of running revision and writing and doing speaking engagements and uh, volunteering in my community and being a stepmom, um, my father-in-law also got really sick uh, in October, and we've sort of been really um, tied up with helping him and, and trying to get as much time as we can uh, f with him before he passes away. He, he has stage four cancer, and it's really not good right now. So we're doing all that we can as a family to kind of come together and spend time with him and make the most of the time we do have with him. All that to say is that I could work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, literally, between revision, between speaking and writing, between um, working with my coaching clients, um, writing for the Huffington Post, writing books, doing guest blogs um, and video casts, um, doing webinars, running the video game shop, being with my family. I mean, does anyone else relate to a packed schedule. I mean, I could have something every single day of the week. But I found out really quickly that um, when we took over the shop and I started working on Saturdays there at the shop, I couldn't, I didn't have a weekend. Um, there was never downtime. I would come home on Saturday night and or Saturday afternoon and I would, you know, run around doing house stuff. Um, and then Sunday, you know, we're doing things as a family and Sunday night we take our uh, my stepkids back to see their mom. And it's just like the weekend never happened for me. And then I'm rolling out of bed on Monday morning and I'm starting the week off uh, again. And it kind of hit me about a month or so ago that I can't keep doing that. That I mean, that was beyond my limitations. And I was able to keep up with it for a while. But I kind of looked back and was like, ugh, I don't like who I am when I don't have... Sorry about that. And um, I don't have... Um, I don't really feel like I'm connected to myself in the midst of all of that. So uh, I decided that Monday is my day. That's my Saturday or Sunday for that matter. Um, that my husband's off at work. Um, the kids are not here for the most part. Uh, I don't have to be at the shop. It's my day. And so Monday is my day. I spend at home. I write. Um, I kind of do things that I need to do for me. Um, catch up on my favorite TV show if that's it. Uh, but I do a lot of writing and a lot of reading and planning uh, material. That's really when I do that. And that really fills me up because that's my passion. And spending time in a quiet uh, work mode for me is, is really a great way for me to recharge. And so um, I started doing that. But, you know, that's not to say that uh, I haven't had things come up that has tried to derail that plan. And so I'll give you a really great instance. Um, I didn't have anything scheduled on Monday. Um, you know, I, I had a wide open day for the most part uh, until about four o'clock. Um, I could have, you know, done anything or scheduled any appointments, but I had set that day aside for me. And sure enough, I had people contact me wanting to get together, and Monday was the only option. 
uh, for this week. And it took everything within me to say no. Um, one was to go have coffee with a girlfriend and talk about some events we may want to do together. But I knew that I couldn't step away. I had to hold to making Monday uh, my day. And so that does mean that, you know, I've got a short week for the rest of the week, but I can do more now with those five or six days that I could ever do with seven because I took that time to reinvest for myself. And so when things come up that are sort of spontaneous, that are kind of out of the left field, you know, what do you do? I mean, what do you do? Um, how do you pick and choose where to spend your time? And if a really great opportunity comes up on for me on a Monday, you know, how do I choose to go ahead and say, yes, I'm going to, you know, step out and do that. Or I'm going to, you know, create time in my schedule to go be a part of that. Well, part of that is knowing what I need and what my limitations are. If I know I need that time for myself and I haven't, um, I haven't had that yet, then I really need to reconsider that coffee with a friend. Um, or maybe coffee with a friend is kind of what I need this week, you know, that uh, I need a break a little bit, maybe to go socialize with someone who's not a client or not a kid or not my husband, even though I love him to death. Um, so you have to know, you know, what is it that you really need and what is your limits? If I have something the rest of the week packed schedule that I'm going to be really stingy with that little bit of free time that I have because I know that's precious and I know it's really important to me. Have you guys ever bought like your favorite cake or your favorite chocolate bar or your favorite candy and instead of, you know, you don't just devour it all at once, you savor it and you make it last as long as you can because you just love it so much and you just want to enjoy it. That's kind of how that time for yourself has to be treated. It's special. It's protected. You won't just give it out to anyone. You know, it's kind of a no share zone. Uh, and you want to hang on to that and make it last and make it count for something and really enjoy it and relish in that. So when things come up out of the blue, you've got to really know um, what it is that you need. I have this one curl that is hanging out here that's driving me crazy. Anyways, uh, but you have to really know what it is that you need um, and what it is uh, that's really going to either enhance you as a woman or take away from you as a woman. And if it's going to push you to the breaking point, then no matter what it is, it's probably not the best thing for you as a woman. And that goes for even church activities. Uh, I know a lot of ladies that are super involved in their community and super involved in their church, and it's all really, really good stuff. But when it takes you to the point where you're going to have an absolute breakdown, then those things no longer become good. Um, I remember experiencing that myself. Oh my gosh, I could tell you some really funny stories about absolute breakdowns in my church or, you know, in the public when I was supposed to be doing volunteer stuff because I was just pushed to my limit. Uh, so don't do that to yourself, okay? Know what it is that you can do. The other thing I hear a lot of women say is that, well, I have a lot of good intentions of what I want to do, but <clears throat> or taking time for myself, but as soon as I do, then my kids need me, or, you know, a uh, babysitter falls through, or, you know, my husband doesn't want to watch the kids, and I just can't get my family on board uh, with this need. Let me tell you... <laughs> If you have a husband or you have a significant other that lives life with you, you need to articulate in a non-negotiable way that this has to happen, that this time for you has to happen. And if they don't already see that, um, you really need to share from the heart on why it's important. And I'm not saying that... Um, you're not going to negotiate the time frame or you're not going to negotiate the length of your time for yourself or what you're going to do or how much you're going to spend. But I just mean the importance of it um, has to be non-negotiable. So if you know that, okay, Monday morning, I'm wide open. I have nothing going on. I'm going to make that my time for me. Then there has to be a plan of attack that um, you know this is what we're going to do. And everyone has to know about it. Everyone needs to understand that this is mom's time or this is your time uh, and that there needs to be a plan in place in order to take care of other things that might need to be taken care of. So if kids need to be watched, um, if husband needs to step up on a Saturday night and watch the kids while you go soak in a bubble bath and read your book, I mean, you've got to be um, really articulate with that and really communicate that um, and know that everyone needs to understand, even kids, they need to understand um, why it's important for you to have that time for yourself. Uh, <clears throat> my stepson, when he first kind of came into the picture, um, he was here for the summer and he would uh, get up 
actually he would stay up really, really late. And in the early morning when I would get up, he would be awake still. Uh, and he would be sitting in the living room playing as PlayStation. And the last thing I wanted to see or hear at 5 o'clock in the morning was gun shooting and people dying on the screen when he's playing some stupid shooter game. (laughs) So um, I had to just really say, you know what, bud, why don't you go in your room? We have like six video game systems in the game room. Why don't you go in there and play something? Because this is really my time right now. And um, he didn't really understand why I needed it, but he respected it. And now we don't have the issue anymore. Um, And I remember shortly after that, him coming out and he was like, "Um, is this still your time? Because I don't want to come out here and bother you if it's your time. (laughs) He was so sweet about it. So, you know, just you've got to communicate it and you've got to just be really honest and upfront and let them know what it is that you need. And so um, that's a really great start. There's so many other nuances to time management and to really gaining control of your schedule, control of your time and control of what happens in your day that this would be a really, really, really long periscope if I tried to cover that all here today. Uh, But I wanted to give you some encouragement in that. Um, I also want to share with you a couple of things that can help you in this topic um, going forward. So first of all, like I said, head to the website, revisionforwomen.com. You'll find lots of free things, but um, I just uh, published a book or had a book published called Kick the Clock, How to Give Up on Managing Your Time. It's uh, my book on time management. You can find it on my website. You can also find it on Amazon.com. Just search for Kick the Clock, and it will come up. And you can order that at an ebook as well as a print version. For less than a venti coffee at Starbucks, you can get the ebook version of this. I'm telling you, it's packed full of really, really, really good stuff to help you create good mindsets for time management. Um, It will totally flip upside down the way you think about time management. But there's also some really great practical how-tos, worksheets, all that kind of good stuff to help you manage your time and kind of get a hold on it. And so go check that out. Um, Kick the clock on our website. The last thing I want to share with you is our Facebook community. If you're a Facebook gal, um, go into your search bar on Facebook and look for Reconnect with Christy Brownie. And it's Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E, Reconnect with Christy Brownie. That is my, my personal Facebook community. Um, We have uh, about 70 or 80 women in there right now. We just share encouraging stuff with each other. There's other moms. There's other business owners there. Um, And we're going to actually start up a exclusive sort of training and um, and web content just for that community group. We do that often where if you're a member of that community group, and it doesn't cost anything to be a member. You just have to ask to join. Um, you get uh, included in some of this exclusive stuff. So that group gets the best of the best of me, and um, they share really great stuff too, and it's a very interactive group. So uh, go over there and ask to join. Reconnect with Christy Browning. Uh, and so if you have any questions, you can hop onto the website and send us an email, or find us on Facebook. Uh, you can message me there as well. So I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't forget to find some time for yourself and above all else, choose to live revised.